fans in Baton Rouge Line Stadium Drive and down Victory Hill come the Tigers and Coach O leading the Tiger Walk into Death Valley. The fans from Georgia have been barking in the bayou for days. Kirby Smart knows as a player at Georgia and then a coach here how intimidating this place can be, especially for his quarterback, Jake Fromm. And with that, the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us indeed to Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And our matchup, East against West, the Georgia Bulldogs and the Tigers of LSU. As you take a look at the standings in the SEC, we're at the midway point of the season, so the standings matter now. Georgia trying to keep a leg up on Kentucky and Florida. LSU trying to keep pace with Alabama in the West. And we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. This is the best game so far in the SEC. And because of the way the schedule is set up, it's a unique one. These two teams don't see each other very often. The last time they played was five years ago. The last time Georgia was here was 10 years ago. And they don't play here again until 2030. With that, it's a pretty tough ticket. As I bring in my partner, Gary Danielson, did any of the luster go off this game because LSU lost last week? No, not at all. I mean, you see teams that are ready to play each other, LSU will be ready. And, you know, the Georgia fans have been grouchy. I think Kirby's been <laughs> grouchy, but uh, I think this game will have it all. Georgia is ranked number two in the country, 6-0. and Their average margin of victory is 30 points. They've got the number two scoring defense in the country, and yet the Georgia fans, and you know who you are, are saying, oh, they're all right. Sounds like you have some first-hand yeah. knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you've reached elite status, and I think this is the signal when Brad says the Georgia fans aren't happy, they're 6-0, and but they're playing against Ohio State, Alabama, the top of the food chain. Well, they need to be ready today. I thought they were ready early against South Carolina, but that game kind of fell apart. They should be ready today, and they come into this stadium with a couple players that are difference makers. Miko Hardman changes the defense because he can take a short pass, and you have to be ready for him with his speed to go all the way. Every play, LSU has to know where he is. And on defense, Georgia affects the other team because basically half the field has been eliminated because DeAndre Baker's been so good against the run or the pass, he's basically taken away half the field. We spent a good amount of time with LSU quarterback Joe Burrow yesterday. He wanted to take the, I guess, the blame for the loss last week at the Swamp, but man, he needs some help. He does, and, and quarterback takes the blame, and that's the way it goes but I agree with you you know who can step up from this LSU team today against this great Georgia team and make some plays where is he going to find some help how about a 50 50 ball that LSU comes up and makes the catch instead of the drops they had last week and going in to the fourth quarter Joe Burrow was the leading rusher Brissett got started late but today Joe Burrow needs help so he can make the plays in the fourth quarter. Here comes the number two team in the country, the defending SEC champion, Georgia Bulldogs. Third member of our crew, Jamie Erdahl, just moments ago with head coach Kirby Smart. Coach, the last time you faced a top 25 team was over a month ago. How have you prepared your guys for your toughest challenge yet? Well, we prepare each and every week the same. We go out, hit people in the mouth all week. It's what we do. It's how we practice, regardless of the opponent. You've seen teams get after Joe Burrow a little bit. How do you adjust your defense to knock him off his mark? Well, you got to affect the quarterback in every game. I don't think that changes based on who it is. We got to do a good job trying to affect him today. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Kirby, of course, was a player for Georgia in games here. He was an assistant coach under Nick Saban here. And the two quarterbacks getting set. 31st meeting all time that dates back to 1928. We finally have a game under 90. <laughs> 83 right now. It's a beautiful day in Baton Rouge. So Rodrigo Blankenship will tee it up. Clyde Edwards Elair and Nick Rosette wait back at the goal line for LSU. Fifth time out of 48 kicks by Rodrigo Blankenship. A touchback. And out come the Tigers to the 25. 
And that brings us to the Chick-fil-A starting lineup, starting with Joe Burrow, who had taken care of the ball so well up until a week ago. His first interception was a pick six and then one at the very end of the 27-19 loss to Florida. Here's the rest of the lineup for him. Justin Jefferson has been his number one receiver so far this year. On the ground, pickup of a couple for Nick Brosette. Georgia defensively, as I mentioned, only giving up 13 points a game. That's the group, DeAndre Walker, their best pass rusher. Georgia only has six sacks. That's 116th in the country. And they know they have to at least affect Burrow in the pocket today, if not get to him. <laughs> Empty backfield for Burrow on second down and eight. The quick throw is complete. Jamar Chase chased out of bounds by Richard LeCount. Interesting matchup if you just look at the rushing attack for LSU against the rush defense for Georgia. Georgia not doing well. Eighth in the league in yards per rush of attempt. That is not like Georgia in pass. But LSU is 11th in yards per attempt running the ball. It's a matchup that could go either way, probably the key to the game. They haven't done that well on third down this year, especially last week in the loss to Florida. LSU was four out of 17. Here comes a blitz on third and six. Burrow flushed, and down he goes, and there's the sack, and it's DeAndre Walker right on cue. Boy, that's one thing you don't want your quarterback to do early in a football game, especially against a team that is struggling to sack the quarterback. He knew it right out that it was going to be a blitz. Now the clock has to go. I got to get rid of it. I don't want my offensive lineman eating the sack early in this game. Walker, the guy we highlighted, that's his fifth sack of the year. And a punting situation by Rosenberg's kick. Miko Hardman backpedals and has to call a late fair catch around the 29 yard line. So a quick three and out. And we check the Chick fil A starting lineups for Georgia. And it all starts with number 11. Sophomore Jake Fromm, who right now is completing 73% of his passes. And that's going to shatter the school record of Hudson Mason back in 2014 if he keeps that pace. Really even numbers 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns, two picks. <laughs> And the rest of the Georgia offense, they've had trouble with their offensive line. And kind of iffy on Solomon Kinley, had an MCL from a week ago. They expect that he's going to be out there, and he is. But they've had some injury problems, including Ben Cleveland, who's out with a broken leg. Elijah Holyfield is the single setback. Charlie Warner, the tight end in motion, and the gives to Elijah. And got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Ran into Ed Alexander. Defensively for LSU, they're strong at just about all phases. Defensive line, linebacker, secondary, you name it. They've got some good ones. And this guy, Rashad Lawrence, one of Gary's favorite, because he does the dirty work. He does. He does it when he's hurt or whatever he has to do. They're not as deep as George in the defensive line, but they're pretty darn skilled. Second down and 10, that's Hardman in motion. Here comes a blitz from Devin White from down the middle and complete. And it's Isaac Nauta, the tight end, for a first down. The reason, the reason you can throw this ball down the middle is your center picks up the blitz. Gilliard takes on number 40 and stones him. Pick up of 19. From over the middle again. This one's in and out of the hands of Nauta. Well, Georgia has thrown two passes, and Devin White, number 40, their outstanding All-American linebacker, has blitzed both times. One time he got picked up, this time he had a run at the quarterback, and as Ness told you, trap pass. And he should have had it. Brings up second down and 10. There's number 40, Devin White. DeAndre Swift in the Georgia backfield from fakes it to him. Has to throw sidearm and dropped by Swift out in the flat. It'll be third down and 10. The chess game going on 
again from Georgia's offense to Dave Aranda and his defense is when do you go man to man against this team they know Georgia loves the deep play action pass they burned Vandy last week with it to take the lead when they trail for the first time all year 7-3 that's the chess game that LSU has to have when do you keep that free safety deep Georgia's been good on third down this year, but they'll have to earn this one. Third and ten from deep sideline streak. And oh, just over the hands of Nicole Hartman. It would have been a touchdown had he pulled it in. You know, we saw that in the Tennessee game. Remember, Fromm missed a few deep throws. Yep that he had chances to get early touchdowns. Miko Hardman is hard to overthrow, but this time he did. Obviously, if you put that on him, that's a touchdown. Yeah, he's still running. Absolutely. If that's a yard shorter, brings up a punting situation. Freshman Jake Camardo will kick it away. And back on the other end is Jonathan Giles around the 10 yard line for LSU. No, not really. Out of bounds. It'll be inside the 20, I think, but Maybe. not by much. I don't think so. It'll and be. They're going to stop right at the 19 and a half. <laughs> We're both right. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's a run blitz, and that doesn't pay off because Brosette just rambles out for 11 more for the Tigers. Great block that time by Adrian McGee, number 73, taking on the blitzing linebacker. 73, watch him take on, gets Patrick, number six, in the hole, and they run right behind him. And now it's play action and deep ball for Burrow. What a catch by Marshall again. Freshman on freshman, he beat Tyson Campbell. Early in the game last week, he had one just like that, and Jefferson dropped it. This time, they make him pay. Back to Brosette, and another four or five yard pickup. In the pregame show today, Jamie talking with Coach Argeron, and he, she said, what do you have to do to protect your quarterback? He said, more play action on first down and the long ball. And, and, and catch the ball, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Last week, it was nothing big. It was a bunch of little things that beat LSU. Burrow to the end zone. Jump ball, knocked down. Yeah, there's that guy again. The Andre Baker, the guy <laughs> Gary talked about in the open. Yeah, if you're, you're going at him, you better rerun a great route with a perfect throw. Now, every, anybody's being capable of being beaten, but if you better do it at a high level because Baker has seen it all. He's been in this league. He's took the battles. He's gotten beat a few times, and he comes back ready to play. The completion percentage against him is like 34% for opposing quarterbacks. So they don't pick on that side very often. Big third down and five here in the red zone for LSU. Burrow throws late across the middle incomplete. And he was getting some heat. The closest guy was Clyde Edwards Elair, but Robert Beal, I think, with the late pressure, got to Burrow. Watch Jawan Taylor, inside linebacker, take away the play. They're going to try to run the back into the middle. He walls them off. Not going to get there. Nobody to throw to. Tremendous play inside linebacker. That's your job. Do not get beat inside. Force the throw to the outside. He did his job. Cole Tracy has been almost perfect this year. We saw him with the game winner at Auburn. This will be a 33 yard field goal attempt, and it's up and good. So the Tigers got a long pass down to the 20 yard line. Georgia's defense stiffened, and the Tigers have to settle for three. Best news for LSU is the receiver making two big plays. Yep. One on third down, and then the big catch. Great throw, obviously, but when your receivers are making the plays, that's contagious. Avery Atkins tees it up for LSU. That's Nicole Hardman back deep. They'll try to keep it out of his hands as a kick returner or a punt returner today because, as Gary mentioned, a game breaker. If he gets his hands on it, and he won't even look at this one. So Georgia will start from the 25. trips to the top of the screen but it's a draw play to Swift right up the middle DeAndre Swift broke a tackle at the 35 and all the way out to the 45 yard line 
Boy, he is special. He had problems with his groin at the beginning of the year. He just didn't seem to have that explosiveness that he had before. But that time, Charlie Warner, number 89, again, got on number 40. That seems to be circled in the Georgia game plan is make sure we get a hat on their best player, Devin White. So Swift's last two carries for 12 and then 18, and now it's back to Holyfield up the middle, and Elijah, whoa, runs over John Battle. He won that battle. The champ is here. He runs angry. He does. Again, watch the linebacker get taken out of the play, Devin White. Beautiful job by the offensive line. Actually, both inside linebackers blocked. You can run the ball pretty effectively when your offensive line handles both of the inside linebackers. Remember when Herschel ran over Bill Battle? Yes. I, or Bill Bates? Well, I know Bill was, Bates remembers yeah, it. Yeah, Bill Bates remembers it. And John Battle, I don't think we'll forget <laughs> that one too soon. Seventh play of the drive coming up, all rushing plays. Do you take a shot here? I, two deep safeties. I think they'll run. And they will. Holyfield trying to get to the edge does another good gain and another collision back there with John Battle. Battle's going to have nightmares about number 13 right now. And he's hard to knock down like his dad. That's right. <laughs> Two deep safeties right there. You can see him standing on about the 15 yard line. Jake Fromm looks at it and says, let's go with the running play. Most of those handoffs from shotgun have a pass attached to it and you just keep it. White again. He has been circled, and they are going after him. Let's see if it's going to be an eighth straight run. It will be, and it's a first down run again by DeAndre Swift as he's got it inside the 15. Just want to go back to C Coach Ogeron talking about Lamont Gilliard, the center for Georgia. I mean, Coach O has been coaching defensive linemen and defense for 30 years, and he singled him out as the best center He's seen on tape in 30 years of football. Senior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Came to Georgia as a defensive player and moved to the offensive line. Good move for him and Georgia. From in the gun. Swift is there with him. Here comes another run. This one is going nowhere, though. Nice job that time by Glenn Logan to make first contact on DeAndre Swift. So here we go. Now we look at... The matchup with the receivers against the man-to-man -man coverage in that LSU secondary. If DeAndre Baker is in the best corner in college football, Greedy Williams is right there with them. Right. Number 29. Matched up against Riley Ridley down at the bottom of the screen. Ridley's there. Nicole Hardman's in the slot there. And Terry Godwin is up top on second down and nine. Brown play action plenty of time scans the field goes to the end zone and overshot Nicole Hardman incomplete. Well write this down for later because on that play Terry Godwin came out open wide open on the play watch the top of the screen. OK runs a route kind of a stutter and into the inside look how open he is on the play that will be noticed marked and remembered. From looked that way to start and then came back to the near side and now it's third down and nine. Georgia can get a first down just inside the five yard line. Nada the tight end in a slot on the right from loads fires in and out of the hands of Miko Hardman and again it was Kerry Vincent on the coverage. So both defenses answer the bell. You move the ball between the 20, 20s, but you got to make the perfect throw near the goal line. And that was not a perfect throw. It had to be low away from the defender, and it was too high to handle. Big Fromm was looking for a flag, and none showed. And that means Rodrigo Blankenship in to attempt a 31-yard field goal. 9 of 11, as you see on the season. From the left hash to try to tie the game, and it's a fake, and it's Blankenship trying to carry it. Down he goes. Devin White. Well, Kirby 
tried to play a less miles play. <laughs> The fake field goal. All for naught. LSU takes over with a big defensive stop. Here, Georgia went 59 yards in 12 plays and didn't get any points out of it. Fake yeah. field goal went awry. I think Kirby had the exact look he wanted, but a great head to, uh, individual heads up play by LSU. So the Tigers work from their own 16. Edward Elair behind Burrow will get the call in Georgia all over that play. Let me show you things you can't teach as a coach. Some guys just got it. Here's Greedy Williams right here, and there's Grant Delpit. That's the look they want. Two aggressive players coming off the edge. But Delpit smells it right away, looks back, and gets outside, and then forces the player inside. You know that... There's the reaction outside. I don't know if those guys sold their tickets to the Georgia fans, but they're having fun anyway. So they made money in watching the game. <laughs> Burrow down the middle, complete to the tight end, Morrow, and he's got a first down. Foster Morrow with a big first down catch. Again, Kirby had the look he wanted. He thought they'd come off the corner. Wasn't happening. He's going to keep it. Had an option to pitch it, kept it. He's a tough runner, a good runner. Had a good game there. Well, when we talked to Steve Emzinger about what, how he wanted to attack Georgia, he said we have to find ways to stretch this defense out horizontally. We have to be able to run the ball wide. How do they do it? Georgia blitzes here. Burrow fires far side. Another nice pitch and catch. Jamar Chase. That's his third grab of the day already yeah. for the freshman out of Metairie, Louisiana. I think DeAndre Baker down here on the bottom is going to go, will they ever throw another one my way? <laughs> they threw one that way and he knocked it down. Exactly. And what that does is it allows the defense, Mel Tucker's defense on Georgia, to slant and roll your coverage away from him. Edward Zelayer first down, and he busts into the secondary. Edward Zelayer in a foot race. Inside the 10-yard line. J.R. Reed saved a touchdown. What a way for the quarter to come to a close. LSU with a lead, and they'll have a first and goal to start the second quarter. We'll return to Baton Rouge after this message in a word from your local station. We switch ends of the field to start the second quarter. LSU threatening after that 46-yard run, 47-yard run. Got him first and goal at the Georgia 7. Behind Rosette. He will get the carry, trying to cut it outside. He's dropped for a loss by Natrez Patrick. Let's go back to the play that got him close here. Third and short is when you're susceptible. The safety comes up too fast. There's no safety in the middle of the field at all. Once you pierce the defense, a missed tackle, there's nobody there. Here's a pitch on an overload to the right. And heading to the two-yard line is Brosset. So now it's third and goal. Well, this would be a humongous stop for it Georgia. Would be. They already have had one. And could they get another? From the Chick-fil-A pilot cam, as you see Brosette coming right at you. They mark it just inside the four, where it's third and goal. So now we've talked about how do you get run the ball against Georgia? Do you have to involve your quarterback in this play? Burrow under center. Jefferson in motion. It's just Brosette off left tackle, and he takes everybody in with him. Or did he? They say no. I thought the I push thought was across. Apparently it's fourth and goal. Here's from the goal line. That's a better look. Well, maybe not. Well, I saw his helmet go across. I cannot see the football, so you can't change the play yet. 
There you see number four who's carrying it, and right there you would think if Boy, the ball's I, where I it should be, you, it I, should be a touchdown. But, but can you see the ball? That's you just true. can't make up the play here. One of the biggest contingents of Georgia fans is right over there in the corner of that end zone. Yeah. So they'll be screaming for their defense. Meanwhile, LSU is inches away from the dog's goal line. Remember, Joe Burrow is 6'4 and about 218 pounds. And it's his call, and he's in. Touchdown, LSU. Unless the ball was out. The ball came loose, but probably after he crossed the line. Joe Burrow with a touchdown on fourth and inches. And for him, his third rushing touchdown of the year. He likes to run the ball. He says, I'm never going to slide. If anything, I'll run out of bounds. So just putting his head down and going straight ahead is you know, fine. And I also think if he would have tried the Drew Brees jump over, he would have got stopped because Georgia was guessing that he was going to try to dive over the line. I don't think he'd have made it. Cole Tracy will come in for the point after. Tracy for the point after to try to make it 10 nothing LSU up and good going back to my point everybody said what if Georgia gets behind in a hostile environment they're behind in a hostile environment Joe Burrow and LSU up 10 nothing here in Baton Rouge. Bring it out to the 25 yard line as we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the field. Everybody said, What if Georgia gets behind? Here they are behind. They've been yeah. behind almost the whole game <laughs> after 15 seconds all year. Better stop sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Georgia ran the ball on the last time drive six times for more than five yards. They got down there, then they threw it. The difference to this game right now, Jake Fromm started out with a completion. He's one for six, five straight incom six straight incompletions by Fromm. The only completion was to his tight end, Isaac Nauta, an 18 yard pickup, so he's going to have to pick it up. Fakes it to Brian Harry and going to go deep on first down and overshot his intended receiver. Jeremiah Holloman. Let's just go back to that last drive by Georgia when they got down there before the fake field goal. They had runs, remember, with Holyfield. They had runs of 12, 18, 17, 7, 8, and 5 yards. And they come down here on first down and throw the ball again. Harrion stays in there. It's basically Georgia's third tailback. Here comes a blitz. From getting heat. A wobbler had it tipped in the air. Harry and caught it, but very little gain. Devin White was the guy with the pressure on From. And I think Braden Fajoko, number 91, it was the defensive lineman that got in there and got the kick. No, it was Devin White, wasn't it? It was 40. Wow. So they've been signaling him out all day, but you can see Aranda, he continues to blitz him from his linebacker position. The last thing Georgia wants after giving up a touchdown is a three and out on their next series. They've got to get nine here. From fires incomplete, and it is a three and out. Reedy and, Williams in the coverage. And LSU that loves to play man drops and plays deep zone coverage that time. Middle of the field is covered by the robber in the middle. Nowhere to throw the ball. Get it to the outside. If he'd have thrown it correctly, it would have been intercepted. He had to throw it away. So Jake Camarda into punt. Wow, three straight incompletions after that drive from LSU. Now Georgia fans are going to be saying, what about Justin Fields? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you play two, you get asked about two. Yep. Jonathan Giles, fair catches, and goes down to his knees to ensure that catch at the 30-yard line. With 12.40 remaining in the second quarter. It's been all Tigers so far. A 10-point lead on the number two team in the country. Hey! 
Joe Burrow to throw on deep middle. Jefferson wide open. Justin Jefferson inside the 20, still fighting for yards. LSU's offense on fire right now. Well, when you get find a receiver, goes in motion, nobody follows him. And then Georgia messes up. Hand signals did not work. They were signaling to each other, and both of them thought the other guy had him. You got him, I'll take him. Now LSU goes hurry up with Brosette, who got a couple. That was a 60-yard gain, excuse me, a 50-yard gain to the 20. Boy, that is a, the worst breakdown if you're a, a coach or a fan of Georgia. They put one guy in motion. It's like motion 101, and you completely bust it. LSU back in the red zone again with a 10 point lead and threatening here. I really think this is the first pressure drive for the floor, excuse me, the Georgia defense all season. Burrow in the gun, the quick toss is bubbled. Incomplete Derek Dillon, the intended receiver, and J.R. Reed was right there trying to come up with a carom for an interception, but it's going to be third and seven. Well, it was a good decision because off the edge, Georgia decided to bring an extra player pressure, and you throw it out there, you got one-on-one. -on -one. And there is no comparison in the quarterback department so far today. And so far in this game, after finishing against Florida one for nine in the second half on third down, LSU has started out three for six. And they've got another one here, third down and seven. Here comes Walker. Got to Burrow, and Burrow had to just get rid of it. Well, he had a screen pass on, so he was willing to retreat and wait. But the back never got freed up. Brissett was running the screen. He's going, please, please, get out there. And just about a half yard short, that would have been a walk-in. You know, against the blitz, if you are able to get the ball to the guy, it, it goes to the to the house. So DeAndre Walker, who had a sack earlier with the pressure that blew that play up, and it forces a Cole Tracy field goal attempt. This one will be from about 36 yards once they spot it down. Kick is perfect. So tack on three more. 13 point lead for LSU with 11.22 to go in the half. These two kickers today just aren't going to allow anything. Touchback again. <laughs> Jake Fromm stays in at quarterback on a two out of nine days so far. They'll try the running game again. That's what they had working earlier. Andre Swift maybe got three. Ed Alexander, who was shaken up earlier, back in there in the middle of that defensive front for LSU. Well, as you read, D, I was interviewed a week or so ago saying about Georgia that I believed to run the ball well against the elite defenses in the SEC, they were going to have to use Justin Fields. They've run the ball fine in this game. It's not been the running game. Swift got two more, maybe. <laughs> and right now, the Tigers' defense is hungry, and they're pushing everybody around. It, it's been a little play selection, if you ask me. You know, I mean, the last series, you throw three straight passes. The one was actually caught. I thought it was incomplete when it hit his arm. For a yard, but now you get another third and five, and you got everybody growing here. You got the whole crowd. Punt, fumble, punt. The last three times they have had the ball, and the crowd getting into it here on another third down and four for Georgia. From Fires deep on the sideline over here. Terry Godwin looking for a flag. There is no flag. I think Jake Fromm was confused again. Dave Aranda, who's known as a man-to-man -man coach, defensive coordinator. They went deep zone again, and Georgia had nothing, no answer for it. Fromm started on the right side of the field, went to the left. The receiver and the quarterback were not on the same page. So another punt for Camarda. 
Jake Fromm now 0 for 4 on third down. Giles, fair catch taken around the 29 yard line. LSU's got it back with just under 10 minutes to go in the half. All Tigers so far here on their home field. Let's check in with Jamie. Well, guys, Joe Burrow, we met with him yesterday, and having this be our first home game with them, it was amazing to be in his presence and to see his serious demeanor. He said he enjoyed his time at Ohio State as a student, but when he came to LSU, he wanted to treat it as a post-graduate internship, and his teammates would agree this guy is all business when he runs this offense. First down at the 39, Edward Zelaer, and Georgia stands him up for no gain. Tyler Clark and Michael Barnett, the first two to meet him. So we're at the eight minute mark. LSU with a 13 to nothing lead. Uh, a quarterback sneak touchdown and two field goals. On the slant, nice throw and catch. And finally, DeAndre Baker says, they came my way. Stavon Sullivan made the grab. Well, and that's their big slant guy. Stavon Sullivan is 6'6", 6'7", you know, 230 pounds. And this is the play they use him for. Wall off and throw the slant. Another third down for LSU. They come back the other way to Dillon, and he's got a first down. Reed trying to rip the ball out of there. Makes the tackle, but it's another Tiger first down. Uh, Joe Burrow is in total control. He's throwing the ball before they break. His leadership skills right now, he's running the ball. He took that early sack, but since then, he's played A football. Back in Georgia territory at the 45. Play action. Burrow wants a big one. Deep, just over Dillon's outstretched arms. Man. They had him. He knew it. Nobody in the center of the field. He sees the free safety squat, go the wrong way, and he's got him. Just a yard too long. Took a shot after delivering that pass as well. So a nice mix of run and pass for LSU on this series. Second and ten. At the Georgia 45, Edward Zeller finally got to the edge. He's been trying that all day. Wow. Oh, nice run wow. there. Great stiff arm about seven yards into that run. Foster Morrow, number 18, came around with a good block and then to finish off the round, run by Elair. Watch 18. Help, help. Oh, good handoff by Charles that time, 77. Great block. This time he's hit. At the line of scrimmage by Rochester well, with those tackles. And we're back to fourth down, and LSU owns fourth down. <laughs> Especially fourth and one. They like well, this. Well, they had the fake field goal. They've owned it. He's in the shotgun this time, though. Well, it didn't matter. Edward Zelayer into the secondary, and it's inside the 20 for the Tigers again. Well, you know how impressive this is. That's four fourth down wins. Jacob Hester is impressed from the 2007 exactly. game when they had five fourth down that they made against Florida in that game. Burrow, play action, going for all of it in the corner. Incomplete intended for Marshall. Campbell was covering. Boy, the hurry up offense has caught Georgia a little bit out of sorts. There's the two freshmen going at it on that last play. Yeah. Tried to do an Odell Beckham and it was not enough room. They've had the ball three and a half minutes, threatening to score again here before halftime. Georgia substituted with five different fresh players. Second and ten. I thought there was a false start, but I guess not. Burrow in trouble. And he's going to go down. Oh, man, and maybe out of field goal range, too. Everything that could go wrong went wrong on that play, and Georgia took advantage of it. Sadiq Charles, look at number 77. Maybe he just got a good head start. Oh, I don't know. That was really close. Holding. Offense number 77. <laughs> that penalty is declined. Third down. Well, he didn't get the false start, but he did get the hold. You know, it was going to be a screen pass. Jonathan Ledbetter, number 13, defensive end for Georgia, read it, grabbed the receiver, did a great job of reading the play and throwing it up. 
Watch Ledbetter, number 13, right there. Read it, retreat into it, and Burrow had nowhere to go with the ball. You got to throw it right at his feet. You got to give me third and 10, and you got to stay in field goal range on that play. A loss at 12, so it's third and 22. Burrow with a four wide out grouping in the shotgun here. They're going to keep it on the ground with Burrow, and Burrow, he gets some of that back, yeah, back into field goal range. Absolutely. Be about a 38-yarder now. Good job by Burrow, keeping it, knowing what he had to do. He made the mistake, and he fixed the mistake. You got to love it. After that run, he got up talking to the Georgia defense. <laughs> and this is a read all the way. You ride it, ride, and then you keep it, get around the end that time, make the big play. DeAndre Walker, number 15, had a chance, but once Burrow got outside, it was enough to get him back in field goal range. Cole Tracy, two for two already today. This one from 39, just inside the left upright. And that's going to wind down the first half that has belonged to the 13th ranked team in the country. Coming off a loss on the road, the home cooking, I don't know if it's a gumbo or whatever, but uh, Georgia has not awakened yet, and it's been all Tigers. 16 to nothing. The Tigers go to the locker room with the lead. Still a two possession game if you want to look at it that way for Georgia, but they're going to have to do a lot more offensively and defensively, as Gary said, for that matter, in the second half. And I'm sure Kirby is going to tell Jamie that right now. Coach, giving up 250 yards of offense, what is your defense missing on that you're seeing that you could fix? Well, they're doing a good job going hurry up on us, and we've given up some big plays. We took a chance on the third and one, they popped a long run. We got to tackle better, and we're not playing real good sound defense. Is there a reason to use Justin Fields more in the second half to spark your offense? We feel like we can get a spark we certainly will all right coach thanks thank you he is right Ness. two big plays a 50-yard pass and a 43-yard pass and a long run so a surprise happening here in baton rouge at halftime 16 and other as we sent it to the geico halftime report here's the all lsu in the first half 16 to nothing as we come back in Tiger stadium in baton rouge to open up the third quarter georgia will get the football first to start the third. And they will work it from the 25 yard line as we welcome you back. Brad and Gary. Okay. Is Georgia playing that poorly or is LSU playing lights out? You pick. That's a good question. A little of each on miscommunication, busted plays, but I do think that LSU has come to play. The receiver started it early in the game. Jero's, Jero, uh, Burrow has been tough. But, you know, I think Jamie's question to Kirby was interesting. Remember, he was on the other side of Tua with the spark right. a year ago. Will he use the spark? I go back to last year's Oklahoma game. Jake Fromm had a great second half, 8 for 12, 101 yards passing when he was behind in that semifinal championship game. They're going to need him to repeat that kind of performance. He's going to run with it on first down here and got leveled after maybe a two-yard game. And he had plenty of time to survey again. Take a look at some of the game trends. We talked about Jake coming in, completing 73% of his passes. He's already missed on 11. LSU, great on fourth down, including point getters on fourth down. And Georgia has trailed almost 25 minutes in this game after 15 seconds of trailing coming in. From throws out complete to Hartman. And I think he got the first down. Miko Hartman on the catch. Remember, the 30 yard line is just like the goal line. Since it was a touchback, if he touches that line, it's a first down. No need to measure. And it is first down. As you look into the shadows that are taking half the field here in Baton Rouge. Rob trying to be heard. He's moving his tight end, Charlie Werner, from right to left. And that's DeAndre Swift. And Swift, a good run and another first down, a pickup of 12 or 13. 
You know, we talk about Georgia having a good second half from Fromm in that game. Remember, Sony Michelle carried the ball in the second half, nine for 86, and Nick Chubb, eight for 56. So they did not lose their balance going into the second half of that game. Devin White has got Swift wrapped up after a game. And slap Swift on the helmet. Devin came in as a number two tackler in the SEC with 53 stops. He's always around the football. Wouldn't you like to see them feed Holyfield a little bit? He really started the game out with such great intensity. He's in there right now behind Fromm on second down and eight. They fake it to him. Fromm, plenty of time, throws complete. This one to Riley Ridley who finally has his first catch of the day and it's another first down. Yeah, he was in a crack position, which Georgia does a lot with their wide receivers. And then a good play action pass crossed all the way across the, the formation. Plenty of time on first down to throw. This is the first time in a long time Georgia's even been this deep in LSU territory. They spot it at the 21 yard line. First and 10. From play fake to the end zone, too high, and tipped away by Greedy Williams. That's the confidence of a guy that knows he has that extra step anytime he wants it. He doesn't interfere, coming right across from the right side of your screen. Watch him cut under the throw and make the play. Beautiful defense. Talked to Greedy yesterday. He's got those long arms, and he used them effectively right there. From trying to get Nauta set up on the other side. And they'll run it here. Swift, a yard, and that's it. Third and nine coming up. Well, I thought Ed Alexander did a great job that time. He's listed as a backup, but he's coming in a lot to plays the no tackle position. That time he ate up the block and then with one hand made the tackle. Well, last time on third down, Fromm had that long throw to Hardman. Let's see what he comes up with on this third down. He's in trouble. Down he goes. Michael Divinity with a sack. Wow, what a spin move. He was matched up against Andrew Thomas, the left tackle. Watch him spin his way into the backfield and make the play. Beautiful play on the left side over here. He spins inside, throws Thomas away. That's throwing a guy over 320 pounds away from you and makes the play. I was going to ask you, had they gained any yardage, was it two-down territory? That took all of that away. And now Blankenship will try a 40-yard field goal to finally get Georgia on the board. And the kick is good. So it took Georgia into the third quarter, six minutes into the third quarter, to finally get on the scoreboard. Fromm leads the drive that stalls, but they do get three. Now Georgia's offense was out there for 12 plays on that last drive, covering 52 yards in just under six minutes before the 40-yard field goal. And Blackenship, the guy that hit the field goal, set the kick away. And almost all of his kicks have been touchbacks this year. First down at the 48. Burrow steps up in the pocket, going deep. Man there, overshot him. It was Jamar Chase incomplete. He's had some guys open that he's missed. Yeah, that time the receiver and the quarterback were kind of going different directions that time. Chase wanted to go to the middle of the field and Joe Burrow threw it to the outside, had no chance. The last two conversions on second down, LSU was able to run the ball far enough to get it into third and medium. Let's see if they can do it again here. Nick set with Burrow in that backfield. Georgia thinking about a blitz off the corner. And now it's an option. Burrow's going to keep it. Nice job. Probably should have pitched it. Yeah, nice job off the edge that time. You got to buy time, buy time for your help to get there and force the pitch late. And it was 
perfectly defended that time from the outside in. And Tyreek McGee last time did a perfect job. And he took a big hit from a group of Bulldogs defensively. It brings up third down and eight. On third and long, the Georgia pass rush has been effective. See if they can do it again. Jontre Kirkland again in the lineup. Number 13 does a little bit of everything. Right now he's a receiver in the slot. And it's Brosette going the other way. And he's short of the first down. They ran right into the teeth of the blitz that time from Georgia. Overloaded defense that way, and they kept the play on and ran right at it. Georgia overlaid it. You see the blitz to the short side of the field. They went right around. Josh Gordon now to punt this time. He's there inside the 20 specialist, if you will. End over end kick. And it drops at the five. And it's down at the four. Can't do it any better than that. So Georgia's got the ball back. That's the good news for them. The bad news is they've got it at the four yard line. And they need some magic out of number 11. They're down 13. Georgia's tailback is in the end zone, DeAndre Swift. Fromm fakes it to him, loads and throws and almost intercepted by Delpit. Boy, he is quickly becoming one of the top safeties in college football. Yeah, yeah I think he's there. <laughs> he made the great play on fourth down on, and this one he reads it again very quickly and just retreats and one-handed makes the stop, trust me. This one would have been completed if the guy doesn't have a 36 inch vertical and get his hand on it. He leads the team in sacks and interceptions. That's a rare combination. Now Fromm is in the end zone in the shotgun as well. Second down and 10. Jake throws near sideline. It should have been caught by Hartman right. and he dropped it. Can't throw it any better than that. And Miko knows it. There's some great safeties in the Southeastern Conference yeah. over the last 12 years. These are the 12 years I did and covered all of these players. And I'm telling you, this guy can line up with any of them. And all of those guys played in the NFL. Some still are. Yes, they are, in including the oldest one, Reggie. Father time, Nelson. Not a good spot for Jake Fromm, third down and 10. Four-man rush, throws, is it intercepted? Very close to it, Christian Fulton got up with the ball, but I think it's incomplete, and now Devin White pushes no, Terry think, Godwin. Right, it may be he just took it right off his hip. He says he has it. Yes. Freshman Christian Fulton, former five-star player, he's the freshman, let's see if it hit the ground or not. Wow. Boy, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't either. I didn't see it bounce there at all. The ruling on the field is an interception. Well, if they ruled it an interception, it's not going to change, I don't think. Not yet. I got to see one more time with the ball. Does the ball hit the ground right? <laughs> Ooh. I don't see it hitting the ground, do you? I thought the ball was going to hit, but he raised it before it hit the ground. So we talked about no turnovers. Now we have one. Only the third interception thrown by Jake Fromm this year, and it gives LSU a golden opportunity here at the Georgia 23. And remember that second down play where Hardman had the ball, 50-50 ball, and dropped it. Edward Zila, that's a face mask in the middle, I think. Although I see no flags. He's straightening it all out. That's for sure. Exactly. Remember Michael Hartman had that catch on the sideline. He was clapping his hands. He knew he should have had it. And it led to the interception. Edward Zilair, tough run on the inside. Got it inside the 15 by a foot or so. When we were talking, oh, they're going to go faster. You watch it third and short. They're going to get up to the line of scrimmage and run the same play again. Remember, Joe Burrow has the option of keeping it if he wants to. Third down and a short two. Uh, 
they stopped don't it. think he got no, it. No, I don't either. Jordan Davis, one of the first guys there from the defensive line. Yeah, one of those true freshmen that was down on the scout team early in the year and has now come out big tonnage in the middle. I don't think it matters if it's fourth down or not. Burrow's up the line going, I'm, I got this. And they're four for four. Five for five. So five for five, remember one of them were counting as the fake field goal, and then four of them on offense. Burrow to the corner of the end zone. Jump ball incomplete intended for Stefan Sullivan. DeAndre Baker was covering. Yeah, and I like a good no call this time too. These two guys are fighting for the ball, two big, tall, tough guys, and let them fight. You mentioned earlier Sullivan's listed at 6'7". And Baker had to go up as high as he could to stay with him. Second and ten. Edwards Elair pounds it down to the six. Well, you know, we've talked about the Georgia offensive line being able to get their hat on Devin White. But now the LSU offensive line, they gave up a couple sacks. You're going to have that on third down. But they've been doing well. Look at the yardage in this game that LSU has rushed for. They're going close to, what, three? No, no. 100. 50 yards and running the ball already. Can the Georgia defense get a stop? Third down and four. Number four, Nick Brosette with Burrow in the backfield. Burrow looked over to him, throws it that way. Oh, he's lucky. And he lucky. He, he's fortunate because he threw it like with his third choice he had no conviction in that throw at all and he's lucky he got away with it jr reed got a hand on it at the end right there yeah like six more inches the other direction and that would have been a disastrous interception you have to be conviction when you throw the ball in the end zone that was like second third thought Cole Tracy will try a 24-yard field goal. He's perfect three for three today. And he's still perfect. Tack on three more for LSU. Three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Time is of the essence if you're a Georgia fan. 19 to three. Well, I got a question. Which quarterback do you pick now if you're Kirby Smart? Do you go to Justin Fields or do you stay with Jake Fromm who struggled today? I, I would mix it up. I, you know, I would I think I'd get want to give this LSU defense a different look. Trouble is if it works, you really got a problem. You got an issue, don't you? <laughs> you got an issue. Yeah. I think it's gonna be Justin Fields. Just got a gut feeling it's gonna be. It does look like it, yes. You're right. Just right. for a spark, just to give this LSU defense a different look. The trick here is you can't be one-dimensional. Against this good elite defense, you gotta force LSU to play pass and run, he not just played, one way. He only played one snap against Missouri. This is his second snap today. And he got maybe two yards. And then he got swarmed under. And, and they're basically playing him as a wildcat quarterback. See, I mean, he was back there. They were playing him run all the way. And Fromm comes back on the field. So he had two snaps, two runs, and number 11 comes back out. Yeah, I, I, that's not how I'd use him. If I'm going to use him, I'd use him. Holyfield behind from Isaac Nauta, a tight end in motion. Play action from throws on the sideline. Caught by Nauta and a first down. A little wheel route had man-to-man -man coverage from Devin White, number 40, and Devin had no idea where the football was. Isaac Nada had complete advantage when the ball was in the air. Nada, the leading receiver for Georgia today. That's his third catch for 47 yards. And a first down in LSU territory at the 49. Under two to play in the third. Late blitz coming from Devin White. Fromm's going deep sideline. 
And Riley Ridley is looking for a flag. And did he get one? He might have on Greedy Williams. Greedy saying it wasn't catchable. Pass interference. Defense, number 29. 15-yard penalty. Correction, spot foul. Automatic first down. Grabbed his jersey early and kept a hold of it, the face mask yeah, even, didn't he? Exactly. Yeah, that was an easy one. That could have happened on either bench. It would have been called. So Kirby Smart. On the sideline, Georgia first down by penalty. Justin Fields back in the game. Along with Holyfield in the backfield. And it's Elijah Holyfield. And again, a power run. Yes. And he's still going. And this is the reason I thought they would use Justin Fields this season. Because with him in the game, the running game works better for everybody else. You got to protect the Wildcat quarterback running the ball. So what happens when you give it? You have one less man to stop the run. Got an LSU player down under that pile. And you can see the offensive line fired up. And the ball is right at the 10 yard line. So it's first and goal. Now you wonder if you stick with Fields because is he more dangerous inside the 10 yard line with the running quarterback in the game? He stays in. And he stays in with Elijah Holyfield. Same set. And remember, LSU's playing him as a tailback. Holyfield heading to the goal line. End zone touchdown. Elijah Holyfield. And I think they got to go for two here to make it an eight-point game. Well, this is a guy that got him there. And another angry run where he takes Delpit and company and Fulton as the last man into the end zone with him. Jake Fromm coming in for the two-point play. Trying to make it a one-possession game here in the waning seconds of the third quarter. They come up to the line in a hurry from the pitch. Now it's an end around. And it's DeAndre Swift and he's short. Devin White made the tackle. Well, they faked the Philadelphia play from the Super Bowl, and he kept it. It was the fake throwback to the quarterback. Give it a little work, and LSU says, no way, we're not falling for it. You could see anything at two-point play, and LSU defended it. Devin White stopped the two-point point conversion for LSU. And this kickoff's returnable if he chooses to, but he doesn't. Edwards Elair will take a knee. They got a fullback in there in an eye formation right now, Torrey Carter. The throw's going to be out to Jefferson on a wide-out screen, and J.R. Reed's got that smelled yep, out pretty good well. Good defense. And that'll bring the third quarter to a close. A big 15 minutes coming up. Can LSU pull an upset? 19 to 9. We'll return to Baton Rouge right after this message and a word from your local station. Uga on the road. His team is down 10 as we start the fourth quarter. The Tigers of LSU trying to pull an upset. And they open quarter number four with a second down and seven. Jefferson in motion. Play fake. Burrow loads it. Going deep middle. Got a man. Jefferson on the catch. In between two defenders. Well, I think Richard LeCount, number two, the safety, thought he had it. I thought he thought that he had an interception on the play. Tyson Campbell was beat, but the free safety was standing right there. I thought when Joe Burrow threw it, he was crazy, but he got away with it. Got it to the 18-yard line. Now the toss sweep. Edwards Elair heading toward the goal line. Did he get in? Not quite, but he's close. And you know, Tony Carter caught a play, pass play, and this time he leads the toss sweep, and the hurry up has given Georgia problems. Does he get in? 
Pylon cam as he does the splits. Yeah, his right knee was down. I think it's short. Right knee down right there, ball short of the line, and then he spins in. They line it up again, that close. Burrow again, that close. Touchdown, LSU. And George's dream of staying unbeaten and number two in the country is fading quickly in Baton Rouge. You knew this one was coming. And after Joe makes the touchdown, he comes back out and beating his chest. Remember, after last week, he was the guy that everybody said lost the game. He had to gut it up and come back and play this week. Cole Tracy's point after is good. When you're leader of the team, you show him you lead the team. And he did it. And Joe Burrow, three rushing touchdowns today. And the sideline going wild with LSU with a nine and a half minutes to go and a big lead. It's coming out. Nico Hardman trying to make something happen. Oh, he ran right big that collision. Tackle. And now he lost the ball. LSU, I think, has got it. It might have been the kicker, Atkins. They got the ball, LSU does. Holy cow! It was Patrick Queen, number eight, that had the hit on Hardman. And I was impressed with the way Miko Hardman ran right through that tackle. But bad things happened after that. The ball popped loose. And then the guy that ends up with it, did anybody touch the ball when any part of their body was out of bounds? Atkins is out of bounds. Does he come back in and establish himself? Yeah. Looks like LSU's gonna snap it before anything can happen. Wow. At the 14 on a turnover, Nick Brossett. Short game. So you stand around all game waiting for a kickoff return, and you finally get one, it's the wrong way for Georgia. And then your kicker recovers it. Yes. A stunned Georgia sideline right now with nine minutes to go. This will shake up the SEC in a big way. I still think both teams will control their own destiny the rest of the way. Taking all of that clock down to two seconds. And Brosette hit immediately by Natrez Patrick. Might have gotten a yard out of it. And it's third down. Miko Hartman on the sideline. Just tried to make something happen. Third down and eight right here at the 12-yard line. Oh, the tight end in motion. They just keep it on the ground. Brissette, the safe play, is wrapped up by Jordan Davis. And so the guy that is perfect on the day, probably coming out for another field goal attempt. There's a flag down, though. Illegal formation against the offense. More than four players in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So the guy that's been Mr. Automatic so far for the most part, Cole Tracy, comes out. He already won the Fred Mitchell Award for the best non-FBS kicker when he was kicking at Assumption College where he hit 68 field goals. 
And now he says he wouldn't mind being the Groza Award winner. Nobody's ever been able to do that because he transferred here. And right now he's on a pretty good roll. I got a feeling that'll be an Aflac question in a few years. Yeah. Don't you think if he does both? Chris Carney, my buddy who put that Fred Mitchell Award together, gave me that nugget last night. And he's still perfect. Five for five. Well, it's obviously going to take three touchdowns. That's a whole lot to ask with seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Hardman will just let this one sail into the end zone. That'll be interesting to see who comes out to play quarterback. I was thinking they might let Justin Fields go in there and just try to scramble and run and throw around and see if he could get some experience throwing the ball because if they're going to come back and win the championship, I think they're going to have to have Fields be more of a weapon than just run the ball when it comes in. From back to Godwin. Terry Godwin, who's been injured a little bit. Yes, there is. Over the middle, almost hit the umpire with that one. Riley Ridley says, well, the guy was in my way. Incomplete. Well, the umpire does exactly what he's supposed to do. Once the ball snaps, he moves towards the line of scrimmage. And right in the way of the throw. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was getting at. Yep. DeAndre Swift gets the first down. And we're under seven minutes. And as you mentioned, Brad, it's got to be all hurry up. And Jake's got more experience than Justin Fields. And at the rest of this game, it'll be hurry up and onside kicks. Thomas in the back the stop. First down. The officials were stopping play. They hadn't gotten the chains moved on the far side. They still don't have them set, but Fromm's going to throw on the sideline anyway, complete to Riley Ridley. Trying to get a little work done to get it down to the 25. Well, Riley Ridley has been looking over the bench for some throws for about two and a half quarters. And this time he's matched up against the All-American Greedy Williams, but it's a perfect throw from Jake Fromm, the back shoulder throw that he's so good at. They finally got the chain set again. Georgia's trying to go hurry up, and I think they need a younger chain gang. They're yes. having a hard time getting down the field. At the 27. From to the end zone, touchdown, Riley Ridley. And there's the first score they needed. Boy, he, he looked like his brother that time. He faked the corner route. He got on the safety and burned it badly to the middle. Watch him come into the safety, run on battle, fake the out, and just run right across his face. We've seen Kelvin run that one exactly like that. Georgia usually utilized their time very well there. Only took them a minute 20 to get in the end zone. Blankenship for the point after. 29 16. Blankenship's kick is good. As Georgia goes 75 yards. So now it'll be another decision by Kirby Smart. Does he go onside kick now or kick it deep? Now they've got everybody up close, the Tigers that is, and one lone man back at the 20 is Edward Zeller. You see all 10 guys between the 45 and the 50, and Zeller is all by himself back there inside the 20. So they're anticipating the outside kick. A lot of space if you pooch this one high in the middle of the field. How will they do it? So a line drive. Edward Zeland takes it on the hop at the 17. And knocked out of bounds shortly after the 20. They can get it down almost to the five minute mark if Burrow uses all of his play clock. And he does a pretty good job of it. And now he's going to keep it himself. Joe Burrow on the run. A stiff arm. And Burrow trying to ice it himself. When we met with him, you could tell he had those competitive instincts. 
when you walk away and you compete at Ohio State for a job and you lose and you say, you know where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to LSU. I know I got to play Alabama. I know I got to play Georgia. I want the challenge. He's taken it and he has come through for this team. What a day for Joe Burrow. A 59 yard run to the four yard line. And it's Bruce set. He's going to walk in the corner. Touchdown LSU. What a performance by the Tigers on their home field today. With those two big runs. LSU is over 250 yards rushing at 262. Extra point up and good. And the Tigers of LSU taking command of this game. And Joe Burrow, their leader, did a lot of it. 59 yards to the four, and number four took it in for the touchdown. LSU by 20 with 414 remaining. We saw them win big on the road earlier this year against Auburn. They did that last year and it kind of set them up for the same sort of situation they're in right now. But boy, is the East wide open now, huh? Jake from. Throwing deep, that's going to be intercepted. There was two guys there. Greedy Williams wanted it, and John Battle took it away from him. Yeah. I think Greedy Williams was just cruising under the ball, and it bounced off of him, and Battle gets it. Second interception of the year for Battle. Christian Fulton had one earlier today. <laughs> Greedy Williams, who also has two interceptions on the season for LSU top of the screen he's not going to bite for anything short he shows bump and run but he's retreating all the way playing the deep ball and battle took it right away from him so speaking of the east with georgia i mean that's the story here too i remember this is a team number two in the country they don't come home again to play in athens till november 10th right. against auburn so they're going to have an off week, and then they get Florida in Jacksonville, and then at Kentucky, both Florida and Kentucky with one loss. Notre Dame kept their hopes alive today by coming from behind. Coming up tonight on CBS with NCIS, followed by Magnum P.I., and then a new addition to 48 Hours tonight, only CBS. Thinking about Ed Orgeron, the story he told yesterday, he and his wife Kelly were going home the other day. They stopped and picked up some white beans and rice. He made a little mixture, and he said, yep. I got home, I didn't have anything to eat it with, and my, something smelled really good. He said, my neighbor was cooking, grilling out. He said he came over and he had like a blue cheeseburger, but it was only a half a burger. He said it was great <laughs> with my beans and rice. And then the guy said, you know, coach, we enjoyed being at the game last time when we sat in the box. He said, if you want to come to the Georgia game, you better bring more than a half, half a hamburger. A burger. Well, I'll tell you what, LSU played more than a half a game, and they deserve this one. Yeah, this was a steak day. You bet. Georgia falls to six and one and four and one. LSU climbs to six and one and three and one. So there'll be a shakeup in the top 15 in the country as LSU will move forward in the rankings and Georgia will fall. Big, big home win for Coach O and He's with it. Uh, he's with Jamie right now down on the field. Coach, once again, we find ourselves in a melee in a game that you guys weren't expected to win. How did you get this one done? Tremendous team effort. Our guys were hungry all week. A lot of respect for Georgia. We know we have to play our best ball. This is our best game by far of the year. When did you know you took this game over? You know, I just felt that the whole game, when we came out in the first half to play the way we did, we could physically stand with them. We stopped their running in the second quarter. I felt good about it. Joe Burrow, the toughness, the way. I know what people want to tell 
him how to slide and how to get out of bounds, but his toughness today really carried you guys? No question. Uh, Joe's tough. He's a leader. Give credit to the offensive line. This is a great defense. To put the amount of points we have, just a tremendous team win. Coach, thank you. Congrats. Go Tigers. Thanks. You knew she was going to wait for that last two words. <laughs> Go Tigers, and it'll probably cost them a little bit as they rush the field after picking off the number two team in the country. Botswana, 36 to 16, the final score. That's going to do it for us. We'll be in Knoxville next week. Hope you join us then. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdo, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Baton Rouge. Final score, 36-16, the Tigers with the upset. The CBS Sports College football postgame show presented by Capital One is up next right after these messages. So long from Baton Rouge.